This video is the very first installment of a completely new series here on this channel. We've decided to share our knowledge of lightsaber choreography, bust a few myths about Star Wars, praise and celebrate some inspiring figures who have played a huge part in making the art of lightsaber combat into a worldwide phenomenon it is today. Tutorials, Q&As, lists, our own take on different aspects of fight choreography, you name it. Join us and together we will make lightsabers even more popular than before. Season 7 of the Clone Wars series was truly a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one for the fans. It's a pretty cool precedent in itself, but we're known as school of saber fighting for a reason. We love lightsaber combat and all things related. Buckle up and let's take a closer look at one of the season's most intense moments. The final battle between Darth Maul and Ahsoka Tano. Darth Maul was introduced in The Phantom Menace, and despite the limited screen time, he became one of the movie's highlights. Even the most hardcore prequel haters consider the battle between Maul, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan one of the few good things in that film. To this day, Ray Park is a welcome guest at Star Wars conventions all over the world. Fans love him, and to be honest, this love is mutual and well-deserved. However, Episode 1 was released 20 years ago. Ray Park was in a short cameo in the Solo movie, but it was obvious that this was not enough. Ray Park is a martial artist, and even though Darth Maul's double-bladed lightsaber looks cool even in static, I bet Park was eager to finally put it to use someday. At first, Ahsoka Tano was not embraced by the fans the way Maul did. However, thanks to proper character development, today she is considered one of the best Star Wars characters ever. Ahsoka is mostly associated with Ashley Eckstein, the actress responsible for the voice of Ahsoka Tano in all of her on-screen appearances, starting with the Clone Wars feature in 2008. But we're not talking about Ashley today, we're talking about this woman. This is Lauren Mary Kim, the actress and stunt woman who was invited by Lucasfilm to do the motion capture for Ahsoka in her fight against Maul. Lauren Mary Kim had already had quite a portfolio before she started working with Lucasfilm. She started her career as a stuntwoman in 2004, and even though some of her roles are listed as, and I'm quoting, stunt female, tai chi woman, or even dancer biker chick, some of her work you might actually happen to be familiar with. Hawaii 5 Luke Cage, Defenders, Into the Badlands, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Iron Fist, Daredevil and, of course, The Mandalorian. And even though people normally don't pay much attention to stunt doubles and their work, she's responsible for one of the most badass moments in all of the Disney Plus hit show. It was Lauren who doubled Emily Swallow aka The Armorer when it really mattered. I'm talking about this exact scene. I said, where are they? Lauren is no stranger to dual blades as well. This video was shot in 2015, five years before the last season of The Clone Wars. If you look closely, you may actually even notice some stylistic cues similar to what she would later use while performing the role of Ahsoka against Darth Maul. Those clips are from Lauren's YouTube channel, you will find a link to the channel in the description below, particularly from her YouTube series called The Kali Diaries. This series takes its inspiration from Filipino martial arts, commonly referred to as Kali. As you can see, Lauren clearly has a passion for this style of martial arts, using a whole variety of dual-bladed weapons. This is another reason why she was a perfect choice for the part of Ahsoka. These seemingly small details always make the biggest difference. The stances that fighters use, their form, their technique, 
All of those things are really hard to nail when you do not have a realistic reference while doing animation. This is exactly why pretty much all the other lightsaber fights in the Clone Wars series look really cool and epic, but you can't help feeling that something's just not right. Strangely enough, Lauren was not the producer's first choice to be invited to do the mocap. She was invited only after a colleague of her had suggested her as a mocap artist to Dave Filoni. The thing is, she got lucky to find herself in that position, and we're lucky with someone who knows and loves what she does. Not just some tool whose only goal is to please the higher-ups in the studio. Even though in my opinion Lauren was a great fit for the job, the story about how she had landed the job seemed like a coincidence, and this is never a good sign. See, directors and producers rarely know anything about proper fight choreography. Their primary objective should be finding the right people for the job and giving them directions. However, it's the stunt team's work after that. The fight coordinator and his team have a simple choice at this point, to do just whatever the bosses ask them to do or to go further and create something iconic. We at School of Saber Fighting value good lightsaber fights over basically anything. This is what we do professionally. We create and perform new choreography based on what we saw in the prequels. We've dissected every single move from episode 1, 2 and 3 to create a style called saber fighting. If Nick Gillard the stunt coordinator of the prequel movies didn't take his job seriously if he did not have the passion for the art of fight choreography, if George Lucas didn't want to push lightsaber fighting to a completely new level, this style would have never existed. And now imagine the prequels without the iconic lightsaber battles. If Maul wasn't involved in one of the best duels in all of Star Wars, there's no way the character would have been revived for future appearances. That is a great example of how a properly choreographed and executed lightsaber fight can redeem a character involved in it. About 10 minutes of screen time resulted in more than two decades of fan appreciation. That's how it works in the world of Star Wars. The lightsaber fights do matter. Say whatever you want about how tired you are of the concept of the Force, lightsabers and the Jedi. This is exactly what makes the Star Wars universe stand out from other space operas. The lightsaber fights are usually the highlight of every Star Wars movie. It's the manifestation of a conflict. And the conflict is the driving force of any story. A good lightsaber fight might make a mediocre story into something bigger, more important, less forgettable. And when the director understands how important the lightsaber fights are, we get something like this. And when they don't... This is why Ahsoka vs Maul is so important. And this is why it's important to make great lightsaber fights into a rule, rather than an exception. Remember how much passion Lucas and his team had for the lightsaber fights in the prequels. They wanted to make lightsaber fighting bigger, better and faster than ever before. This was not a coincidence, but a calculated plan. And because of it, we live in a world where this exists. Ahsoka vs Maul is a great first step to fix something that was broken for such a long time. Every voice matters at this point. When fans are being vocal enough expressing their opinion, it might actually influence the way studios approach certain aspects of their movies. But only when all parts of the huge movie making machine work properly together, we get true greatness. The movie itself shouldn't necessarily be perfect. But if the final lightsaber battle is great, even the most cynical of critics would agree that it was a true spectacle. This is the soul of Star Wars. This is not the only thing that makes the saga great. But without lightsabers, it's not Star Wars anymore. And for those of you that would argue that the Mandalorian was great even without lightsabers, yes, it was. 
but there is a good reason why this is how the first season ended. Your support is the greatest gift of all. We truly appreciate every single view, like and comment. Some time ago, we released a new video and we hope that you watched and enjoyed it. However, if you haven't seen it yet, please click this thumbnail and watch it. It's our best example of fight choreography, camera work and editing. Don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to share your opinion in the comment section.